This morning in the dish, talent in the kitchen is an important quality shared by great chefs, but it's not always enough to cook up a thriving career. For some, finding a space to show their talent can seem out of reach. But an innovative idea born out of the pandemic is giving them a leg up by offering them space in a temporarily closed restaurant. Our own Michelle Miller has this story from Maison Yaki in Brooklyn, New York. Jared Howard in the kitchen is a man living his dream. So what do we have here? What do we have here? We have a selection of Honey Bunny's finest foods. A Baltimore native, his love of food stems from vacations on Maryland's eastern shore. I love spending time with the family. I love eating crab cakes in the summertime. I've loved hanging out in D.C. But you won't find those Chesapeake Bay staples on this menu. This right here, this is the corn salad. So it's roasted corn, scallions, cherry tomatoes. Instead, you'll taste flavor steeped in decades of tradition. This is my tricolor potato salad. I see Red the tricolor. Bliss. It's all in his brand. Still a concept in the making, Honey Bunny's Chicken. A honey Bunny is actually my daughter. I started calling her Honey Bunny out of the blue when she was like one years old. And I kind of made this restaurant thinking about her. Next to you, we have our dipped chicken. You take the chicken, you dip it in the North Carolina mm. Piedmont sauce. Emerging out of this pandemic lockdown at all has quite simply been a miracle. This is very new, but that's what COVID has created, right? It's created this environment where you have to do everything new, right? This is innovation. Yes. It is, it is. I see it everywhere I go, but in particular in the restaurant industry, there's so many of us that are on the sidelines that we have to build partnerships in order to survive. This partnership teamed him with chef Greg Backstrom, owner of Brooklyn's award-winning Olmstead and Maison Yaki across the street. This series even came from a conversation about how we could get involved. Get involved in growing diversity in an industry that has lacked it. According to recent data, women chefs make up less than a quarter of the industry, and just over 17% of chefs and head cooks are black. Did you notice that? Did you yeah. know, like, wait, where are all the women chefs? Where are all the chefs of color? Yeah. He's doing it by not just offering them a space which would otherwise sit idle. And I put Old Bay on top of the biscuits. It has a nice little tinge to it but resources so that now through the end of October, chefs, bartenders, sommeliers can rotate in and out, serving their specialties with their own unique flair. So why do you do this? Because you should. If you have the ability to do, I want my parents to be proud of me, I want my sister to be proud of me, my brother, you know, it matters to me and, and I get joy in trying to help people. It's just been an amazing, amazing experience because I thought that, you know, this was going to be an opportunity to test out this business concept that I had. It turned out to be an opportunity to really engage with the community here and introduce them to my food, but also get feedback. How this son of an entrepreneur and corporate executive transitioned from being a D.C.-based federal employee to moonlighting as a sous chef in the Big Apple is quite a story in and of itself. The restaurant culture is huge here, and so I just fell in love with it. Every time I went to a different restaurant, it was like visiting a different country. So in my spare time, uh, I decided to start cooking. Field trips chef J.J. Johnson gave him his first shot when he ran the Cecil. I'm very invested in Jared and seeing him be very successful in this culinary world. What was it, what was it about him that you said, this guy got to help? Jared's genuine. He's a good guy. And it's really, really hard to find good people. I literally talked to him about going to culinary school. And I asked, I said, well, can you teach me how to cook? And he said, yeah, come on by next week. And for about a year and a half, two years, cook for him for free. And I think Jared shows that sense of hope that there's a new culinary future coming. Knowing the work here stemmed from a growing awareness of ensuring equal opportunity for anyone with a vision and commitment to hard work. African-American restaurants have always played a critical role in the civil rights movement. We have Sylvia's in Harlem, <laughs> was where civil rights activists gathered and planned marches and strategized. It was one of the few safe places that we as African-Americans had outside of the church itself. Dookie um, Chase in New Orleans. Yeah, Dookie Chase in New Orleans. Yeah, that every 
city that has a major African-American population has had one or two of these cornerstone restaurants. And I hope that if I ever get a restaurant of my own, for Honey Bunnies to be a place like that, where people can come together and talk about the issues that are affecting their lives and what to do to make it a better place. And with this experience, he's one step closer to getting those just desserts. Mm, it's just mm -hmm. delicious. We were just texting with Michelle, and she said the food is on the way. <laughs> yeah, here. it'll be here. I'm told it'll within be here 45 soon. minutes. I didn't get that. I, I, I love the providing opportunity. It always yes. comes back to you have to have the opportunity to start to build in communities and people that haven't had that opportunity. It's before. so important because the talent exists. Right. The skill exists. It's just a matter of giving that opportunity. And food is on the way.